What's the difference between making $1,000 with ChatGPT and making a million dollars with ChatGPT? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly that. Because today, we're gonna to be talking about the difference between simple AI prompting, which I'm sure you've heard about before, and something new called AI framing. So quite simply, by watching this video, your income could skyrocket. Because what I'm about to show you today is a simple skill that anyone can learn where you can use AI and this simple framing technique to virtually print money on demand. So humor me for just a second. It's been said before that we use about 10% of our brain's capacity. Now, I don't know how true that is, but if it is true, let's say we're only using 10% of our brain. When it comes to AI, we're using much less than that. I mean, think of all the things AI can do and how smart it is and how we're just using a tiny fraction. Don't you think in that other giant part of the pie chart, there's plenty of money to be made in the powers that AI possesses? Yep, I think so too. And that's exactly what this video is about. In fact, I'm gonna go through and show you exactly step-by-step step, how to use AI to get an output that is much more powerful than what other people are teaching. Because let's face it, most people are using AI wrong or quite simply, not using all the powers that AI possesses. And today, I'm gonna show you exactly how to unlock those powers and use them to create things that make tons of money. And it all has to do with input and output. George Fuchel says, garbage in, garbage out. Now, what does this mean? This means if you put garbage in your mind, you're gonna get garbage out of your mind. Much like those people who watch too much bad TV and their mind starts to deteriorate and all they think about is the stuff they watch on TV. AI works the same way. If you give it garbage, it's going to give you garbage. However, if you give it the right framework, well then, you can pretty much write your paycheck whenever you want. And a couple other quotes before we get started and I reveal this AI framing method that's gonna put money in your pocket. One, from Marcus Aurelius, he says the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your thoughts. And while this is good for self-help and it helps us day to day, this also works with AI. If you start giving AI quality information, you're gonna get a much better quality output. So let's hop over to the computer and I'm gonna show you exactly what AI framing is and how to use it to start making money online super fast. All right, so continuing on with the idea that we're only using a small fraction of AI, what I wanna do is talk to you about how this AI framing works. Because again, garbage in, garbage out. And if you were to take a look over here at ChatGPT, where it's telling me the top most popular prompts that people ask it, you can see that things are very basic, very vague, and aren't really helping the AI understand what we want so that we can get custom content that is actually going to make money. So let's go through and take a look at how this works because yes, most people are using AI wrong. Now, we wanna go through and talk about the difference between framing versus prompting because they are literally night and day in your ability to make money online. Prompting is basically going out there and asking AI something like, write a persuasive product description for product X, or something like start a paragraph, or write an article, or create a table, or something like this that's very generic and very vague, and basically anyone and everyone can do this, so it makes your content less desirable to read and very, very less likely to actually turn a profit. Now, taking a look at this, we can see several mistakes that people are making with AI. Number one is prompts that are too general. They'll ask very broad or vague questions, something like, tell me about the history of art or give me some business ideas. And using this, you can get interesting content that looks good, but it's not poised to make money and it's not poised to actually be read. This is just regurgitated, run of the mill information type stuff that really doesn't go farther than your computer. Really, all you're doing is making more digital noise. And the result is a boring and not particularly useful answer that is not going to help anyone. The next big mistake people make is lack of context. They go through and ask AI something, but they don't provide any context as to what it is. They'll say something like, I'm working on an article about the latest AI news. And they'll expect ChatGPT or other AI tools to do all the work for them. 
And last I checked, AI doesn't work for any of us. It's just a tool. That'd be like going to a job site and yelling at the hammer for not jumping up and building you a house overnight. Yeah, that takes people. However, using the hammer is going to help you accomplish the job much, much faster. Only, unfortunately, most people are using a hammer just like they use AI. When there's a bunch of different power tools and automation available, they're stuck just using the hammer. More about that in just a minute. Next, they don't explore variations of the prompt. They're gonna go out there and they're gonna look for prompts on various popular prompt sites, and they're gonna see very basic stuff like integrate this into this, or maybe something like unlocking the secrets of an engaging niche. Again, that's creative fun words, but it's not really gonna help us get something unique that's going to put money in our pocket. And if you feel like you've been struggling with AI up until this point, and you don't understand why your content's not making money, let me know as a comment below. Make sure you smash a like button because that's all about to change right here, right now. The fourth biggest mistake is ignoring the AI's creative capabilities. AI is a lot more powerful than we give it credit for. We're using one tiny snippet of all that is available. You might just be asking it to write articles when it can actually do research, create tables, and understand the difference between different PDF documents, Excel files, notepad files, websites, and more. This would be like going over to SpaceX or NASA and asking the lead scientist to change the tire on your car, which is way beneath his skill level and pay grade. However, that's what people are doing with AI pretty much every day. And the error you're gonna get is that it's very limited. Number five, the lack of asking follow-up questions. AI is a dialogue, it's a chat box, it's a back and forth. We can prompt and ask things as we go along, but the key is in framing and knowing the right thing to ask. Again, we're gonna get to that in just a minute. Not asking follow-up questions is going to make it to where you're not going deeper into your topics or your discussions, and the interaction is going to stop at a superficial level. AKA, you're gonna get the same output that everyone else gets, and if everyone's publishing the same kind of stuff, yeah, you're gonna get lost in the mix and you won't make any money. And the sixth big mistake is exclusive reliance on the AI, where you're expecting the AI tool to do everything for you without having to go a little deeper. We see this all the time where people publish 5,000 articles in 10 minutes with AI, they get a bunch of junk, it might rank on the search engines, but at the end of the day, they don't make any money. And why is that? because their content is unreadable. They're getting something so generic and so vague, yet based on a keyword, that even when people do read it, they have to rely on tons and tons of generic ads to make money, which we all know pay less than two cents per visitor. Which means, if you wanna make money, you need to generate a lot of content. Until now. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll please. <laughs> Introducing AI Framing. As we mentioned earlier, George Fueschel, Fuschel, something like that, who was a computer scientist said garbage in, garbage out. Meaning if you give a computer garbage, it's going to give you garbage in nicely packaged code. But at the end of the day, if you put lipstick on a pig, yeah, it's still a pig. And that brings us to what we give the AI determines our outcome and what you create determines your income. Think of it like this. AI is in a closed loop. It can go out there and look at things online, but it's trained on a certain set of data that is a closed loop. And you might be thinking, well, how do we break it out of that closed loop and get it to do whatever we want? Well, that's not exactly what we wanna do. In fact, we wanna make the loop even more closed. Wait a minute, Marcus. Does that even make sense? Think of it like this. You might have a doctor nearby, and he is a general practitioner. You go to the doctor, you say something's wrong with my knee, my hair looks funny, whatever it is, he is going to give you a generic answer based on his skill level of generic knowledge of the body and health and doctor stuff. Yeah, you get the idea. However, if we have a specialist who only specializes in the eyes, what's gonna happen is he is going to be an expert on one thing, all of his knowledge is going to be specified and to someone who has an eye problem or can't see properly, this doctor's information is gonna be worth its weight in gold. Whereas this doctor, even though he is very smart, he went to med school, he knows everything, he is not an expert in eyes. What we wanna do is we wanna take the AI 
and make it an expert in one topic. This is known as a closed loop. We are going to close the information around the AI for a specific topic. And we are gonna guide it based on the outcome that we want and various different pieces of input to where we can get something that'll actually turn a profit. And to show you how framing works, I'm gonna give you a fun little riddle. Let's say you have a clock, right like this. Pretty fancy, huh? And let's say that the hour hand right here moves 1 60th of a degree every minute. Then the question is, how many degrees will the hour hand move in one hour? If you wanna have a little fun with this, put your answers as a comment below. And the answer is one degree. If it's moving 1 60th every minute and 60 60ths is one degree and 60 minutes is an hour, then you can see it moves one degree every hour. And if you thought that question was kind of a brain teaser, it's because of the framing. The framing was in the clock, the 60 minutes, the hour, and the minute. What this did is frame your brain to think of different things. And as we can see here, prompting ChatGPT to understand this question is actually showing us why people get it wrong. It's all in the framing. And framing is a very important part of marketing and using AI to make money. So what we're gonna do is create a closed loop environment. The idea is simple. Within this framework, write an article, create a story, make an image. And as long as it's working within the framework, we're gonna get something very specific. Think of it this way. If I was to go to ChatGPT and say, what are some popular political views in the USA today? it's gonna go through and force itself to think of all the different views in the USA Today. Now we can say, how does this relate to the French Revolution? And within this framework, it is going to take what it just wrote about and compare it to something that's not often related to the obvious stuff we prompted it for in the beginning. And now we can see we're getting something a lot more interesting to read and also has a really good title. Now, please come up with a clickbaity title for this content. And you can see here, this is starting to get very readable. Shocking parallels between modern politics and the French Revolution. You won't believe what's still at stake. The French Revolution never ended. How today's politics mirror history's greatest upheaval. Are we reliving the French Revolution? The startling truth behind today's political divide. I mean, just think about these titles already. This is stuff people would actually want to read, which is much better than a generic piece of content about today's political climate. Is this starting to make sense? If it is, type AI framing is awesome as a comment below. Next, we wanna know before we create the content, what we want them to do next. Once they read our article, what do we want them to do? Hint, this should be the thing that makes us money. And the way we're gonna do that is by inserting into our framing the AIDA principle. This is a principle of marketing that also works for content online. Back in the old days of advertising, you had the attention, interest, desire, action principle. If you were to take a look at this ad from 1929, you can see here, eat candy for health. What is that doing? That's getting their attention. Who doesn't wanna eat candy to get healthy? Then it goes through and gets their interest in the article by making it, well, yeah, interesting. Then they give the desire for something else. How this applies to you. It gets them thinking, okay, how is this gonna apply to me? That's the desire. Then the action is what you want them to do next. And while this has worked with ads for many years, we're going to apply this to our AI written content. That way we get content that prompts action. And you can do this simple and small or big and complex. This could be something simple like maybe an article or a printable resource or a video or maybe even a Pinterest post. Or we can create an entire info product or website around a topic. And remember, one piece of content done correctly, yep, actually do what I'm about to show you and that one piece of content can make big money. But first, we need to understand the types of frame input. Think of it like this. Based on this, now. That phrase is super important in framing. We can give AI a PDF, a workbook, 
link to a website, video transcripts, or all different kinds of things from many different sources, and then say, based on this, now, and that is where we have the AI make the content that's going to make us money. Here are some types of frame inputs. First, we can input products. We can either get these products from all different places on the internet, or we can ask ChatGPT to find it for us. Please list the top 10 cleaning products. It's gonna go through and list the top 10 cleaning products very quickly. This is framing the AI to think about these cleaning products. It's kind of like giving the AI ultra focus. Then we can say, now using these, make an article about must have cleaning products for your new apartment. And it's gonna go through and write an article about why you need these for an apartment. See how this piece of content is better than just how to clean your house or even different generic cleaning articles. What we're getting is something much more specific. And we can even take this a step further and look at our keyword tool to see exactly what people search for and then adapt our content to that. Let's say we wanna do how clean does my apartment need to be for an expect. I can take this keyword and then say, now using the same, please adapt to this. And it'll go through and it'll talk about how to clean for the inspection using these different cleaning products that are super popular. We can even take it a step further and then say something like, now think about the money angle saved in a security deposit and make some clickbaity titles. How a $10 cleaning hack could save you hundreds on your security deposit. That's a pretty good title or how I save 500 on my security deposit with just five simple cleaning tricks. These are actually really good. And we could see here, lots of people are searching for stuff related to apartment security deposits. So you could see this is really easy with products. Next, we can go through and do recent stats or news. And something that's been in the news the last couple of days is all this information about the California AI legislation. I can actually go through and give it all the information I can find, including the PDF of the law, and say, please read this info. It's gonna read the info, which is framing it to think in terms of the stuff it just read. It'll give you a short summary showing that it understands what it read, and now the AI is framed and ready to go. Please tell me how this relates to the current presidential candidates. And we could see it's going to go through and talk about what the different people think about these new laws. Again, framing the AI so we get a custom output to create content that people actually want to consume. We can also prompt it with transcripts, PDF reports, Excel data, websites, lists, images, frame prompting, such as the example we did earlier with the French Revolution, forum data, where we could go get information from various different forums and learn about a topic or a product and then get something custom and create a piece of content around that. Or we can even use data from our email where people are sending different reports, updates, and various things like that. Think about it this way. If I had a bunch of emails from a company that I know gets a lot of results via email marketing, I could throw those in there, frame it to create emails similar to those. Obviously, we don't want to copy but we can use several sources and make similarities and get various different styles, lengths, formatting, headline tips, and on and on we go. Think about it like this. If I take this PDF of the top 100 ad headlines of all time from Jay Abraham and say, read this please, again, it's gonna give us a little summary and we can say, now based on this, write a headline for the HeatPal heating pad. As we can see here, this pays $38 a sale and it only costs the user $49. So for every $49 sale I make, I get 38. Yeah, that adds up pretty quickly. Let's see what kind of headlines we get. Please make 10 more. And it'll go through and do stuff like soothe your aches in minutes, say goodbye to pain, heat pal heating pad delivers instant relief. Now, of course, be careful if you're doing a health product. I would actually advise against that but I think you get the idea of how this works. And if I wanted to frame this even further, I could say, what are 50 complaints 
people have about heating pads. Then I can use this to make content about that heating pad, why it helps with some of these, and then share my affiliate link and make money. And now we just framed it with the top 50 things people don't like about heating pads. Now, please write an article showcasing which of these the HeatPal heating pad helps with. And it's gonna go through and write content that's not only good for the user, but it's also gonna help us sell the product. Do you see how this is a lot different than just using run-of-the-mill AI to create articles that nobody wants to read? And we could see here, it has 10 of them. So now we can say, now please make it based on the title, 10 things people hate about their heating pad. And now it's gonna tweak that article based on the framing we already have. Again, think of this as a closed loop. We're just giving it information about this heating pad so that we could get specific results. 10 things people hate about their heating pad and how heat pal fixes them. Hey, that's not bad. And this kind of content works way better than just run of the mill articles. Think about it this way. We analyzed a hundred different articles, products, reviews, whatever it is. We compared the top 50 products, tools, kitchen appliances. Whatever it is, you can throw this into AI and get results super fast. The key is in creating custom, unique, helpful content. And I'm going to have the notes from this video over at downloadmynotes.com. But before you go get those, let's talk about the ways you can use your AI-framed content to make money. You can use this as blogging, where you put content on a blog. And instead of just putting a bunch of random posts, we're gonna take the time, make a good post, frame our AI, and get an output that's actually going to promote the product. Much like we did over here with the heating pad. We can create YouTube videos, where we take the content and turn it into a video, either a faceless video, or one with your face, or even a 100% AI created video. Again, this is gonna give you something specific. You can create online courses by looking at different info places, comparing them, putting them together, and making a course that people can go through and get a desired outcome, whether it's how to train their cat, how to mow their lawn, or how to make money online. We can use the content to create podcasts, social media content. This is one of the most underrated ways to make money possible. I know you've seen the videos out there where they say just share content on social media, and you share, and you share, and nobody clicks, and even when someone does click, they don't buy anything, and you give up on marketing. But the problem is the framing. Instead of having junk content that you're just putting in front of everyone, what if you made specific content, like the heating pad example, and you put it in a group about seniors? And since this is helpful content, as long as you're not going crazy trying to get people to your affiliate link, this can work really well. We can also use this in email newsletters, membership sites, ebooks and digital products where we're actually creating an ebook about pretty much anything we want printables and downloads this is where you can have a printable checklist of maybe things that seniors need when they travel we can see here lots and lots of people looking for information on senior traveling you can even go through and look up something like travel checklist again you could see all kinds of people searching for travel checklist over 39,000 a month and looking at this one here for ultimate packing list, we could see that this one blog post is responsible for 68,000 visitors a month and over $7,000 in traffic value. Now, if he's promoting stuff like rewards credit cards, he's probably making a lot more. And again, it all comes down to framing. Please share the top 100 things people forget when traveling. This is gonna frame the AI to think about the things people miss when traveling. Now, please make a giant checklist of what you need when you travel. Enter, and bada bing, bada bang, it's gonna do the work and create a checklist that we can use to make money. And as you see here, this checklist is getting a ton of traffic and making a ton of money for keywords related to vacation packing list, travel packing list, and on and on we go. So creating printables and downloads by framing the AI is a game changer. We can also use our content in online communities and forums if we don't wanna have a website. 
We can create content for webinars and live streaming, niche websites if we wanted a travel checklist website where we have travel checklist out of the country, in the country, motorhome, car, airplane, boat, cruise ship, whatever it is, we can have pretty much anything. And we can create a niche website with, with content that people actually want to read that makes tons of money. We can create a press release. Like the example where we talked about the AI California law, we can make a press release about how that's going to impact the AI industry. We can do LinkedIn articles and content, TikTok and Instagram reels, Medium articles if you want to post content without having a website, Facebook groups and communities, Quora and Reddit, Snapchat stories and Discover content. I mean, think about it this way. If we had a bunch of content about things people forget when traveling and then pointed to our checklist, yeah, people are going to want to go download it. And we could promote travel rewards credit cards that pay as much as $300 a sale. And we can even use this for print on demand products. We can prompt it with all different kinds of products that do really well or phrases or quotes. And we can get an output that is unlike anything else that actually sells. And the key is attention, interest, desire, action. We're going to get their attention with our headline. We want to make it somewhat clickbaity, but we want to make sure that we deliver on that promise. If we're talking about the 10 heating pad things, make sure you have those and that it's not just an ad. We want to provide actual real good content based on the framing we gave the AI. Next, we're going to get their interest by talking to them about stuff that interests them. Here's the things people forget. Here's a checklist. Here's that. Then we get the desire. Maybe in that checklist, we hint at ways to save money. And the way to save money would be get a travel rewards credit card. Then, of course, we have the action. Click here to get the travel rewards credit card or whatever it is. And it's actually very simple. The key is remembering action is where you make money. If you're not getting people to click to the offers, then you're not going to make any money. Relying on generic ads and generic content is a terrible way of marketing. It might have tricked the search engine several years ago, and you might be able to pump out AI content faster than a dog chasing a squirrel, but is that actually going to make money? When you're framing, you want to make sure you have your money method ironed out and prompt it. Make good content and point to the things that make you money. If you want to learn more about this, check out the videos in the description, and you can get the notes from this video over at downloadmynotes.com, and if you want to work with me, check out blogprofitnetwork.com.